We've had some major updates on Pico Scope 7, which really means it's time to move on from Pico Scope 6 now. That's been retired now for nearly two years. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the new features that we've got on here. Um, a quick update on the stability and the mask and alarm feature. And I'll be showing you how to use that for intermittent CANBUS diagnostics in my next video, so make sure you're subscribed. So the stability of PicoScope 7 now has really turned a corner. I was delivering some PicoScope training uh, last week, two day course, it didn't crash once. Um, usually I am always resetting PicoScope 7 and having to uh, set it all up again. However, the uh, latest version is really quite solid. However, if you are worried about losing your uh, progress when doing diagnostics, there's a setting on here that I suggest you go and apply. Go to settings in that uh, more menu. And we've got here factory, user and last session for your startup sessions. So if you go to last session, if we just set a few rulers on here, let's uh, just set a couple of rulers on there, measuring that. Let's turn on channel B, let's just put it on, I don't know, like 200 millivolts, okay? And just stop that there and close it. When we reopen it, those settings should still be applied. There we go, we can see that we've already got our 200 millivolts on channel B and our rulers have even been carried over. So that's a nice one to set up. Another one that I really suggest that you go and do is set your user settings. So what you want to do really is set it up to the um, probes and settings that you use the most. So you might have channel A and B on 20 volts. You might have channel C set to a, a 600 amp, amp clamp for um, relative compression. So we can put that on 600 amps there. And then channel D, you might have set for a coil on plug probe, okay? So what we need to do then is save that as user settings. So we go in here and change the file type to default PicoScope settings, save it. And then the next time you open up PicoScope, it will be saved as your user settings. If you're doing any in-depth work then, what you can do is just go back to the preferences and switch between last sessions and user. For most things, 20 volts and 20 milliseconds is a really good starting point. Those that have attended my PicoScope training will know the 2020, just to remember as a place to get you going and display most waveforms on the screen. Okay, so the long awaited feature masks is now here on PicoScope 7. That was one of the main features that didn't come across from PicoScope 6 and one of the reasons many people have chose to stay with PicoScope 6 for now. So I actually converted someone onto Pico 7 on the last training I ran. So I think now it's your turn to get on board with PicoScope 7 if you're not already. Um, if we go over to more then, we've got this new feature here called masks, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is hit that star and that's gonna put that in this quick access menu here, okay? Now if we click onto masks, it gives us a warning telling us that this feature is in development. So, you know, don't be too upset if it crashes, but if it does crash, make sure, sure you send some feedback. And um, we then get this menu here, which is a lot easier to work with than the old mask menu. So what we can do here, look, is choose which channel we want to apply the mask to. You can also do it to math channels, which I'll show you in the canvas diagnostic videos following on from this one. And what we want to do is click generate mask from source and we can see then that we've got this mask area that's been put around that 12 volt power supply we've already got on the screen. Uh, what we can then do is change the offsets of that mask. Okay, So if we wanted to make it a little bit closer or further away, we could increase and decrease that tolerance for the mask. Okay. And the x-axis then is then is if you were having anything that was kind of vertical, okay? So the most uses for um, masks in my view on automotive is definitely just for that horizontal plane, making sure that things aren't dropping out, okay? For intermittent faults, which I'll uh, demonstrate now. So here we've got this mask now set around our power supply. So if we apply and close, 
we can see now that that mask has been set up around that 12 volt power supply. Um, if I then start up the oscilloscope, okay, what we can do is very quickly put a power supply fault on and it's recorded on the screen there. So it's really useful for um, intermittent faults. Now you could also use it on um, a longer time base if you wanted, but if you were looking at something in more detail, this might be more useful to see exactly how that mask failed, okay? Um, the really useful thing for this feature is that you could go on a road test or go around the car manipulating wiring looms and be able to record faults up on the screen when they happen, okay? Um, what we've also got to go with this is this counter down the bottom, okay? So that tells us every time the mask fails. So if I just fail that again, you can see there that it's been picked up, okay? And we've also got the actions which can go along with this. So if we go to uh, more, we've got this other feature that's been in there for a little while now, actions, okay? And if we go on there, we can actually uh, choose what happens when a certain action happens. So we've got on here when, when the capture starts, when the buffer is full, when the mask fails. So what we want to do is select this mask fail and then add an action. Okay, and these are the different things that we can do. So we can stop the car capture, restart and save, or we can play a sound. So you need to select the sound you want to play. So we've got beep, bell, chime, explosion. Let's have a listen to that one. <laughs> that might be quite uh, applicable for <laughs> many different things. We've got a siren, a fast alarm, a bell. Okay, so which... That's quite pleasant, isn't it? Okay, so before on PicoScope 6, it just had like this, this beep noise that would go off. But you can also upload your own uh, sound to play if you wanted. So you can, you can have some fun with that. So uh, yeah, go, go in there and check them out and see what you think. And um, the other thing you can do with this actions is essentially create an, an everlasting waveform buffer. So you can see up here that we've gone up to a maximum of 63 uh, waveforms. You, you can change that, but it does depend on the sample rate you've got set and the time base. It's, you know, it's not um, as straightforward as saying, I just want to, you know, save a thousand buffers. There's, there's a bit more to it than that. And um, what we can do is if you're at the limit, you can ultimately create an, an ongoing library of saved buffers. So let's say you were doing a um, overnight test potentially for battery drain, which to be fair, this, this will do quite you know, happily. Maybe if you need to do it over a week or a month or something, this would be what you would want to do. So um, you can go on here and change the event to when the buffer is full, um, we want to stop the capture. We'll add another one to save the capture. And then you just need to select where you want to save it. And we need to add another one then to restart the capture. So you can see the process there, stop, save, restart. So that when we then play that again, and as it comes up to the end of the waveform buffer, you could see there that it, it stopped it, saved it and restarted. So that will just continue on. I suppose until the laptop dies or the hard drive is full or, or whatever. Okay, so that's quite another useful feature. So go and uh, open it up and have a play with the new features. You know, Picoscope 7, no looking back for me.